Do you want to know the one piece of gear I recommend to beginning music producers over everything else? Well, if you click down this video, you already might have guessed it's acoustic panels. Acoustic panels aren't just decorative studio art that you hang up for Instagram pictures. They are essential for getting an accurate sound. Acoustic panels collect stray sound waves like your weird neighbor collects stamps. Getting rid of all the extra sound bouncing around the room leads to cleaner recordings, improved mixing, and more accurate monitoring. But here's the problem. store -bound acoustic panels aren't cheap. That's why today we're going to show you exactly how to make some acoustic panels from scratch without breaking the bank. Let's get into it. If you want to follow along with the building plans I've used for these panels, I've included a free download to the plans in the description below. You'll get a shopping list and a step-by-step -step guide to help you out. And also, I'm making this video because I've got some questions about the panels I use in my studio. I made them over 10 years ago, if you can believe that. But the same instructions will still work today. I've updated all the prices and disassembled one of the panels so you can see how to put it together. Now let's really dive in. Now here are the exact materials that I bought for this project and how much each of them cost me. This is to make 12 acoustic panels. The amount of acoustic panels you'll need depends on your room size and shape and I'll detail how to figure that out later in the video. So be sure to watch this whole video before starting this project. The reason we're making 12 is because 12 happens to be how many insulation panels come in a full set. So that's how many I'll make. The first item you'll need is rock wool safe and sound, which comes in around $60. This is that 12 insulation bats I was talking about earlier. Rock wool home insulation is great at absorbing sound, inexpensive, and it's readily available at most hardware stores. It also happens to be about the perfect size for an acoustic panel. The next thing we need is fabric. The fabric I recommend getting is called black duck canvas, and I recommend getting about 18 yards. After perusing Walmart for the current prices, it comes in around $7 a yard, which puts you around $125 for 18 yards. We'll need this fabric to cover our panels and to hold in the insulation, but we still need one that's fairly breathable, one that lets sound waves pass through. Something like leather is just going to let those things bounce back off into the room. That's why I've chosen duck canvas. Duck canvas is another inexpensive material that's available all over the place. I got mine at Walmart. Next up, we're going to need some wood. The boards I got were a half inch by four inches and eight feet. Now, when I went to Home Depot, I couldn't find those exact dimensions, but I found something like 18 30 seconds by three and a half by eight feet and that will work just fine i do recommend getting the eight foot long boards because that will make things easier when we start dividing up the panels i also recommend maybe getting a couple of extra scrap boards in case you mess up and then to finish off i got some screws and staples to put my panels together i had these before but i thought i'd include them in the pricing sheet because you need to get them if you don't have them so two inch wood screws for around ten dollars a box of staples for around four and then in order to hang the panels i used a metal wire some wall hooks and some eye hooks to bring everything together now after buying everything we come to a grand total of around 331 dollars for 12 panels. That equates to around $28 for an acoustic panel. Now I might've done some math wrong. You may need to get some more fabric in the future. This is an approximation. If it's between $25 a panel and $35 an acoustic panel, you're gonna absolutely be saving money. There is no deal out there that can beat that, especially for the amount of thickness that the insulation is providing, the amount of absorption that you're getting in this specific insulation, and the amount of customizability you'll have in choosing your own fabrics. DIY is the way to go. Now you probably will need some tools to do this job, but there's no need to raid a hardware store. If you have the basics like a handsaw, a stapler, some measuring tape, and maybe some patience, then you can definitely do this with some basic tools. I'll be using some more advanced tools like a drill, some screws, and a staple gun to make things easier. But if you don't have any of these, don't feel like you can't do this. It's just gonna take a little bit longer and it's gonna build some tenacity and willpower. Alternatively, just go ask a neighbor for some power tools or go ask grandpa. But if you really can't find anything, you can always substitute some of the screws for wood glue. And instead of stapling the fabric, you could also glue it on that could potentially work, but that's not what I'm gonna do. So I, I, actually, I don't know if that'll work. Don't take my word for it. All right, now let's actually get into the step-by-step -step DIY guide. I'm gonna show you how to do one acoustic panel and then we're gonna just rinse and repeat the process for the other 12. So first up is measuring and cutting the wood. Get those measurements right and cut carefully. Remember, measure twice, cut once, and swear three times. That's that's important. Each panel that we'll make, we're going to cut two boards to four feet and then cut three boards to 16 inches. This will perfectly frame each insulation piece. To frame these acoustic panels, we're going to use on the long side a four foot board, on the other long side a four foot board, and then on the short sides 
two 16 inch boards. Then you'll also want to cut an extra 16 inch board to put at the back of the installation to hold it in place. This is also where I plan on hanging the eye hooks from later. I'm putting the frame together by using two screws in each corner, the four foot boards on the outside so that the 16 boards get a little bit extra room. But drill two of the screws into the wood at the top to secure the frame together. Then about two centimeters away from the back of the board position, just a little bit so that it's not flush, position your third supporting board and drill that in too. You can position it about a third of the way closer to the top. It doesn't have to be directly in the middle. Use a couple screws on each side, just like you did with the frame. This is just for functionality and it won't be seen. So don't worry about getting this exactly right for every board. This is really just to hold in the insulation. If you did things right, the insulation piece should now fit perfectly into the frame. If you did things right, that's that'll happen with me. Then after the insulation is in place, you're going to want to wrap that fabric around the insulation to hold it in place forever. Wrap it with your chosen fabric. This is why I would choose that black duck canvas because I think black is one of the cleanest looks you can have. But if you want to use tan, if you want to use a pattern fabric, that's also fine. This is going to make it look less like a DIY disaster and more like a piece of art. Stretch it, staple it, and admire it. You also want to fold over the excess corners of the fabric to make sure everything looks nice. Keep the fabric taut as you staple it to keep wrinkles away from the main panel face. You, you got it you can do it. After the front is wrapped with fabric, I recommend cutting a piece for the back panel as well. Cover up that insulation in the back so that none of it is exposed to your producer lungs or eyes when it's finally hung up. Nice job. Now that the panel is looking like you bought it for much more than you actually paid, there's still a couple more steps to do to mount this bad boy. On the back of that supporting panel, mount your eye hooks. Align the hooks so that they're as straight as possible, but once again, this is more of a functionality thing. Don't worry about getting it perfect. Make sure both eye hooks are facing upwards. And there it is. The panel is ready to be hung on the walls of your upgraded studio. Repeat this process about 12 more times until all of the insulation you purchased is accounted for, or maybe just make 10 or eight or whatever you're feeling, because this is your studio and this is your world. Alternatively, you can make some slightly bigger acoustic panels as well by adding one and a half bats of insulation in the frame. Everything is mostly the same, but the supporting boards change from 16 inches in the middle to 22 inches. Using this design will help save on wood in the long run and give you more of a variety of in your panel look. I personally like having a big one surrounded by two smaller ones. I think it looks pretty good. But now that we've got all your panels and whatever you've decided to do, let's actually hang them up. So so before we hang them up, let's just decide where we want to put these panels. Here's where things get a little bit more scientific. To get the best results, we have to be strategic where we place these panels. Where we place these panels is very dependent on where the sound source is coming from. In an ideal room, the studio monitors and desk will be positioned around one third of the way in the room. This will give the sound the most amount of space to bounce around and reduce standing waves. Now, I understand that not everyone will be able to make this setup work for their studio space, but I do recommend using some of the same principles I cover to decide where to hang your panels. I plan on making a future video that describes this in more detail in the future. Make sure to hit subscribe to not miss out on that. So if your desk is a little bit off of the back wall, the next thing we have to worry about is something called the angle of first reflection. And this will affect everyone, no matter where your monitors are. This is where the sound waves will hit the wall first and come back and hit your ear. To find this angle, you want to grab a friend and a small mirror. Sit in your mixing chair and have your friend slide the mirror along the wall until you can see the speaker cone of the opposite speaker. You want to mark this spot. This is why you want to hang your first panel. Then rinse and repeat for both sides. There's also an angle of first reflection above the mixing desk, and you can find that in the same way using the ceiling and a mirror, but just be careful it's a little bit trickier on the ceiling. If you can, I highly recommend putting that panel up there that's known as a cloud panel that's going to help resorb the reflections above even more. Next, we'll want to add some panels behind the console to help absorb any sounds bouncing back to them. And finally, we'll want to add some panels in the corner to help pick up some of those bass frequencies that build up there. These are commonly called bass traps. We can actually just put our acoustic panels there that we made in the corner to function like that. Generally, we're shooting to cover between a quarter and a third of our open wall space with acoustic panels. With the majority of panels being hung near the mixing desk itself, where all of those first reflections happen. Don't worry if you don't get these exactly right. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices for lights, or for doors, for weird things that are going on in your room, and that's totally fine. The idea is just to get the majority of these sounds reflected so we can start getting better sounds. Now let's get into hanging. Because we're using metal wire to hang these, we'll have some more or wiggle room when it comes to keeping these things level. This makes things much easier than trying to directly mount 
each one directly to the wall. Trust me. Add some wire to your panel in those eye hooks. You can just wrap it around a few times around itself to hold it in place. All I've ever done, and I've never had a problem with one falling at all. Then you're going to want to measure the distance between the wire, pull it taut, and the top of your acoustic panel. It's not uncommon to have a few inches, maybe even six or eight inches of slack when you put that wire on. That's totally fine. That's just gonna help you adjust it later, but just measure that distance between the top. That distance between the top is going to be where you want to place your screw. So if you want the tops of the acoustic panels to line up, keep that number in mind as you put your screw into the wall. And then once the panels are on the wall, you can adjust them so they sit flat by rotating them on their hook. You can see that they'll just kind of stay in place and they'll use their own weight to kind of hold them themselves completely parallel as you put them. And then for the cloud panels, I did them a little differently. I actually added an extra board so I can include four eye hooks on the panel itself, two more at the top and then two more at the bottom. And then I included four hooks mounted into the ceiling. I then ran wire through those eye hooks itself and hooked on the wire to the hooks that I put directly into the ceiling. When you're drilling into the ceiling, try to find a stud. If you have a stud finder, you can use that or use drywall screws. That's going to help distribute that weight of the screw and keep it in place in the drywall itself. Please just don't hang them willy nilly because you don't want that panel to come falling down on you as you're mixing. That would that would hurt. Okay, we've hung up all of our glorious panels. Now it's time for the part that really matters, the sound test. In most untreated rooms, sound reflections run rampant. Check out the nasty reflections and reverb on this clap with no acoustic panels. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now check out the room with all the acoustic panels. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Much better, right? This recording will be much easier to mix and add processing to later in the process. So just a quick note about that before and after comparison. I didn't take all of my acoustic panels down, so it wasn't as drastic as it could be. I have 12 acoustic panels up and I took five of them down just so you can hear what the, even just five of them can make a difference. Those extra reverb and those extra waves that you hear in the original recording make it really hard to compress, to add reverb to, to EQ. Acoustic panels are a game changer. They'll provide more value than the latest plugin, that shiny microphone, or that new piece of gear. And it'll probably cost you less money. I promise, if you can hang up some acoustic panels, it's going to make your productions so much better. Hopefully, I showed you today that building these bad boys isn't challenging. I encourage you to give it a shot. Links to the detailed plans, once again, in the description below. They're available to download for free. Stay tuned for a future video where I detail exactly what an ideal home studio position looks like. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Now, if you like this DIY type stuff, I've actually done quite a bit of DIY for my music home studio, including a DIY vocal booth, a DIY music studio desk with a pullout piano, a DIY piano stand, and much more. If you're interested in any of those, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.